well, yes, I've got unwell with flu-like symptoms. We thought it was a virus, so we started giving him paracetamol and ibuprofen, hoping that it will go away in a few days like it always did, but it didn't. When we did not see any signs of improvement in Yusuf's condition after five days, we started thinking something isn't right. So we took him to the GP who said this is a viral infection, no need for antibiotic, just give him paracetamol and ibuprofen. Until that time, Yusuf did not show any symptoms or signs of sepsis, so we were not particularly worried about him until day seven when we noticed that Yusuf slept the whole night and that was very unusual for him. He would usually wake up um, a couple of times in the middle of the night to play. So we got genuinely concerned that we took him to the ED. He was seen by a consultant who started him on oral antibiotic for possible ear infection. I remember asking the consultant to test his blood because I was really worried about him. But the consultant said to me, this is not the condition that you would do blood on. So we went home, we started giving him the antibiotic. On the second day of the antibiotic, his fever became more intense with shivering and he started vomiting. So we were really struggling to give him the further, further doses of the antibiotics or even the paracetamol. So we took him back to the ED and he was seen by the triad nurse. We were asked to wait and they said the waiting time could be up to 18 hours and we waited for around five hours and when we having been called we decided to take Yusuf home at least we could give him the antibiotic and uh, we went home and we very carefully very slowly um, managed to give him the antibiotic and the paracetamol without vomiting and he improved for around um, 24 hours but then his condition it started to deteriorate again. His fever became more intense, vomiting more severe, he developed diarrhea, he became more lethargic. Um, his oral intake has dramatically reduced and his skin started to matter. So we got generally concerned. And at that time is when we really thought about sepsis. Um, I couldn't feel comfortable to take him to the hospital that he might deteriorate on the way so I decided to call an ambulance but the ambulance practitioner said the waiting time is up to 10 hours but she said she's very concerned about sepsis and she asked me to take him to the hospital within the hour and she said she's gonna send a referral to them just go and tell them an ambulance crew send the referral for that um, and that exactly what we did but the three engineers put Yusuf on a green category. When I said to him, how come you put him on a green category and Yusuf got sepsis, he did not acknowledge my concern. He did not show any empathy. He just said, not because you think he has had sepsis, that means he has had it. And we had to wait in the three yards for hours. Anyhow, we've been called after three to four hours to be seen by a doctor. We started telling the doctor about the story of Yusuf's illness and the doctor said this is viral infection and I said to him how come viral infection and that was day 10 from when he first got unwell and his condition is getting worse day by day he said viral infection can last up to 14 days I said to him I know it might last up to 14 days but it usually tend to improve his time not like Yusuf's condition and and again there, were, there was no empathy he just described me of being overworried and instead of acknowledging my concern or showing me empathy he was just criticizing me um, anyhow I said to him I'm very concerned about Yusuf's condition and I can't take Yusuf home like this he asked me what do you want and he said to him I want you to test his blood he said, um, we will observe him overnight and if you are not happy, we will do bloods. I wasn't happy with that, but I said to my wife, at least if that 
is the only way for the doctor to test his blood. Let's do it, and we are in the hospital anyhow, so Yusuf is safe in here. We agreed for a hospital observation. Um, and while in the hospital, Yusuf's antibiotic dose was there, so we asked the nurse to give him his antibiotic, his own antibiotic that was prescribed by the consultant. But then the doctor came and he stopped the antibiotic and said, no need for it. There is no any signs of bacterial infection, he said. Um, anyhow, we waited and when we asked about when the doctor is going to do his bloods, the doctor came back and said, I'm not going to do bloods because Yusuf's observation were normal. But they were not. His breathing was really very fast. His heart rate was going very fast and Yusuf did not come down from mom's chest. He was lethargic and um, the doctor said, um, he, he literally explained everything and justified everything. Every um, red flag symptoms or signs that Yusuf had, the doctor justified and blamed it to something minor. For example, if I say to him he's lethargic, he would say uh, that's normal for for kids when they get fever they get lethargic and the diarrhea from the antibiotics his heart rate and breathing are going fast because of the fever although his breathing and heart rate remained and stayed fast even after his temperature was controlled um, when i challenged the doctor about what use of needing bloods anyhow because He's not been eating or drinking anything over the last few days. The doctor said, I'm going to do a capillary blood test for him. So a capillary blood test is not a proper test to check for infection. It's more of a, a test to check for electrolytes and dehydration um, in general. So he did collect that sample. And shortly he came back. He was very smiling. He was waving the report and saying to me, I'm very happy now, it's your turn to be happy. And I got very frustrated for that. I said to him, how come I be happy and I see my son in front of me and he's very unwell. And again, I expected him to show me empathy or sympathy, but he just described me of being overworried. I said to him, I brought Yusuf to you and you are responsible if anything happened to him. He said you could bring him back if he become a responsible or a lethargic. He Yusuf was already lethargic. But I said to him, do you want me to wait until he become a responsive? And then he might survive that or not? And again, every time I raise a concern, the doctor would criticize me or he would just say you over worried, you stop being over worried, infection were. So basically, we were not listened to. And um, he discharged Yusuf in a very unwell condition. I went home and I was very confused. I didn't know what to do. I just wanted to prove, I was wishing to prove myself wrong. So I decided to do um, blood investigations for Yusuf in a private GB. We shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't see private GP to do blood investigation and the NHS service is available and accessible for everyone. Anyhow, we could not find any book in the same day, so we had to book the next day. And when we got there in the private GP, so Yusuf and she said, it's not blood what Yusuf need. He needs to come in, he needs admission. So while there, the NHS GP called us to ask about your condition following the recent hospital uh, visit and I asked the GP to see him face to face so he can refer him to the pediatric assessment unit. While getting to the GP we noticed that Yusuf has got a quickly spreading rash and I thought this is a severe complication of sepsis but when the GP, I mean the NHS GP saw him he told us um, I know exactly what it is. He said, I know exactly what it is. And he said, this is hand, foot and mouth disease. And you have never had any rash on hands or feet or mouth. And I expressed my 
genuine concerns about sepsis. But again, he said to me, I know it's difficult for you guys. And he started to um, give me false reassurance. And he refused to blue light Yusuf to the hospital. And he refused to, to refer him to pediatric assessment unit. And the only motive for me, I could have taken him to the ED, but I thought if I go through the GP, the GP would send him directly. I would not need to go through the triage process because I was afraid that they might put him on a green category again. So anyhow, um, the GP sounded very confident and that shook my confidence again. I went home, but at home we noticed that Yusuf has got um, a black discoloration around his bottom. So we got worried again and we took him back to the ED. He was seen by the three admirers and again put on a green category and that was day 12. I, I wouldn't imagine a kid coming four times to triage with worsening symptoms and signs and this rash and the triage nurse would put him on a green category and would not ask for a senior review. Anyhow, I felt really helpless and I was desperately waiting for them to call us. We waited three hours and they didn't call and while waiting, I noticed that Yusuf was struggling with breathing. So I took him right away to the triage room and he was found to have low oxygen. And then I remember that um, I broke down, I was crying, I was saying, I don't want him to die. Um, the triage nurse said to me, he's not gonna die, he's not gonna die, and she took him inside. And even then, when everything was pointing into sepsis, and even when the doctor admit that, the presentation is sepsis Yusuf was left in a very small room without proper monitoring. And everything was slow, it's slow in giving the antibiotic, it's slow in treating his fever, it's slow, literally everything was slow. We begged them to give him pain medication and we were told that there is no any room to take him, a proper room to take him, I mean. And then shortly after, um, giving him the antibiotic and pain medication, Yusuf just had a, a vacant episode or what looked as a vacant episode. So we went back immediately and we asked for help. We were shouting and then uh, the whole team came and, and then only we had their attention and they took him to the resource where there were more than four or five beds empty. We were previously told there is no proper room to take him. Imagine if we were not Looking at Yusuf, and we didn't escalate that deterioration would be missed. But anyhow, that was already too late, and um, he needed to be intubated in resource, and he was taken to pediatric ITU. He had a cardiac arrest, and he died the next day. We are very disappointed with the care we received as we feel it fell far below the standards of care among both nurses and doctors, not only on their clinical management, but on their attitude and interpersonal skills too. They clearly deviated from the national guidelines. If they had just followed the national guidelines, we believe Yusuf would have been with us today. Overall, we feel the care that Yusuf received was negligent, lacked empathy, and that there was a huge system failure. I would think so, yeah. I think our concerns were repeatedly dismissed and we were not listened to because we were coming from a minor ethnic background. I strongly believe that we were stereotyped and treated as being dramatic or over-exaggerating, so, so probably contributed. Um, in terms of what changes we would like to make, I would say to manage stereotyping and unconscious bias in healthcare. And I believe that starts with acknowledging its presence and then putting active measures to prevent it, perhaps through education, training and monitoring. So all patients from 
all different ethnic background um, are taken seriously, listened to, and of course, treated equally. Although it is extremely difficult for us every day, we know that nothing can bring Yusuf back, but at least we can do something to prevent this from happening to other families. We're trying to survive a situation where we had no choice but to keep Yusuf's memory alive and see him as our source of strength and hope to continue sharing his story, which will help us turn our pain into purpose, which is saving lives, raising awareness of sepsis, ensure that fewer families will have to endure our pain. And also, because this is not only our story, this is the story of thousands of children and families who lost their loved ones to sepsis. And with that, we give Yusuf an anonymous legacy as well. No words can describe the pain of losing Yusuf or the love we have for him. We were over consumed by anger because of what happened to Yusuf, knowing that his death was fully preventable. We had many moments of shock and denial. We can't truly heal from, from losing Yusuf in such a tragic way. And we can never forget about the fact that we're missing out on a whole lifetime without Yusuf. Trying our best to cope and accept that grief will forever be part of us. And this is our way now of love for Yusuf and what reminds us to keep pushing forward. Our message to the healthcare professional, please listen to parents because they know the kids better and please show them respect and empathy. And whenever you're dealing with a child with fever, please think and ask yourself, could this be sepsis? And if you're not so sure, please do not feel ashamed to seek senior advice, whether at night or during the day and always follow the national guidelines because it's very sensitive to detect sepsis. And finally, I would say please pay attention and do not fall into unconscious bias and stereotyping. Yusuf was the most beautiful, happy and energetic child. He had a contagious smile. We used to go for a walk by the lake where he loved watching little ducks and always tried to have conversation with them, which was really adorable to watch. And whenever we took him to play areas, he got super excited when joined by many kids. He instantly put a big smile and started sharing toys with other children. Us taking part in raising awareness something I know for sure that would make Yusuf so happy and proud. But we love to share his memories with everyone around us. And we like Yusuf to be remembered with love, joy and generosity. And that sharing his story will have a huge positive impact in the lives of many.